workshed. Mike, oh, it doesn't work over there? Go figure. <laughs> Alright, he's over there now. I think he just got a shirt. What is he doing? <laughs> hey, that's a figure. Tumblr's only $15, Carrie. Is it? Wait for it, $15. Tumblr, you can't buy Tumblr for you got $15. They're a website, Miles. It doesn't, it doesn't work. Hi, Barbara. Our mics don't work well. Hi, everybody. Our mics, our mics don't work well. I have to stand here. That's fine. Yeah? Yeah? This is, this is the perfect, this is the perfect metaphor for how this entire day has gone so far. We have been on an adventure. Uh, how, how many Ubers did it take for us to get here? I think it took us three Ubers to get here. The first two did this like really cute, fun thing. It's like super cute, you're gonna love it, you're gonna love it. Uh, they like circle where you are for like five minutes, and they just fucking cancel on you. It's like super cute, cheap. And then the best part is that it's when they charge you for it, so. Oh, well, yeah, when you get into the, the best, 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 best part, when you do get an Uber, and you get inside the Uber, and you're then locked in the Uber, you realize that Uber might have fleas. <laughs> yeah! Let's go! Says, God, Mike! Gray says, I'm, I'm, I'm pressed against the wall, it, it adds an antenna. Uh, Gray sent us a text, we're sitting in the back seat, all three of us together, and says, I think something just jumped on me. Yep, something just jumped on me. I think this car has fleas. And we three went, cool, we're stuck in traffic and 20 minutes away still, so I guess we have fleas now. I'm gonna give myself a special bath later. So, um, welcome to the impromptu uh, 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 Q&A here at the Rooster Teeth booth at New York Comic Con, brought to you by Miles and Carrie being way too close to each other. <laughs> well, the, the good thing is the fleas can breed now. We can cross pollinate. Yeah, yours will have beards and mine won't. That's hot. That is not hot. It's not. <laughs> Nothing about fleas is attractive in any way. Do you think there's people that, do you, like that are like super into pig pen? <laughs> the peanuts. The Charlie Brown character. Yeah. Like, are you asking if someone's kink is like, I want a real dirty boy? I want like a real dirty boy. I want a man that has a cloud of funk that follows him. I don't know if that's... No, it probably is. I've, there's gotta be... We're getting a hard no from Aaron Zag. <laughs> hey, okay, one off the list, a bunch of other possibilities. I can't. I literally can't move from the spot. Move the couch to that spot. We can move the couch. Hey, push the couch back with me. Okay, up. Uh, hey, we're good now. I can sit. How's everybody doing? Woo! Shout out to the one Mineta cosplayer. You're the only one in the world. <laughs> I said, I said great Puma, yeah, but yeah, we're pretty boy. Um, so we have literally no agenda uh, for being up here. So we figured we would like probably answer some questions or something, uh, if people have them, or if not, we'll just keep talking about fleas. Um, Definitely, we can talk about flea. The basis. In the basis. Basis. Yeah, thank you for doing the universal sign for basis. Hey, you have another mic? Does it work? No. Oh, oh, mine's a mine's a lavalier. It's a thick boy. It's a, it does work if I'm this close. <laughs> He's checking that frequency. Because it doesn't work either now. Gray's gonna fix everything. It's, is it misty over there or am I crazy? Is no, it kind of foggy? Misty. It's a little misty. Oh, is it? Yeah. yeah. I did not know this because our booth was so busy yesterday. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Carrie Shaw. Okay. Okay. Hey, what's up? Um, because our booth was so busy yesterday. Thank you, by the way. Um, didn't realize that shadow of more, more, whatever the, what, there's a dragon on the other side of our booth, dude. Yeah. It's rad. What, what? I'll be right back. <laughs> Hi, Eric. Hold up. Ch ch oh, uh, check. Hey, if you're in line right now, you, yes, you, waiting in line to get something signed by the wonderful girls of Ruby, please.
please have your phones ready to take a picture and do be courteous about the amount of things you ask to be signed. We love you. We also have a lot of you to love, so please be nice. Thank you very much. So, um, every year, I feel like there is one, like, standout cosplay. Like, I feel like up until, um, Suicide Squad came out, <laughs> uh, there was, like, a thousand trillion Harley Quinns, which is cool. She's a cool character. There are so many Ricks from Rick and Morty. It's like the season three premiere. It's like the whole council of Ricks have descended upon New York. Yeah, I know, I see you. I see you and your unibrow. It's very cute and funny. What has been your what has been your main oh sh I can't even hand you this mic. You gotta get close. <laughs> what would you say has been like the main the main costume this year? No comment. I was kidding. Um I don't know, I've seen a lot of um well I guess right, right I was I was literally looking around because I was like, what do I see right now so I can answer this question easily? Uh I think the thing that's actually my quirk. Um, I think the thing I've seen the most is the fucking Yu-Gi-Oh headbands. Uh, probably the Yu-Gi-Oh booth. If I had to guess, this is where they're giving them out. There's um, one right here. Do you want it? Is there one over there? Can I have it, please, so I can be so I can be Yami Yugi? It's my move. I was about to say your move. <laughs> Let me see. Oh, it's very good. Going with today's theme, I'm sure this has lice somehow. <laughs> uh, but yes, we're, we're Miles and Carrie. We're from Rooster Teeth and our friend Grace, and we're in the back trying to give us more microphones. We have our panel today at Madison Square Garden, which I still can't believe is happening. Um, hopefully we'll see some of you guys there. Should you wear that? I, I think it's a dumb... I, absolutely you should. I, yeah, absolutely. It's a very good look. Is it upside down? Well, I mean, if you put it this way, it could be the most incredible beard in the world. <laughs> um, oh, Jesus. I take back what I said. Oh, ooh. I feel like it gets in your eye. <laughs> um, but while we're here hanging out, hopefully, I don't know if you guys have had any time to check out uh, a Ruby and Blaze Blue, which I still can't believe is real. That's freaking sweet. Uh, we've got Ruby Combat ready. Yes, Brian, we see you. We know you worked very hard on the game and we love you for it. Uh, you can check that out too. Uh, if you, I, I don't know if any of you here actually funded the Kickstarter, but if you did, thank you. Hell yeah, that guy! <laughs> um, it is really fun. We're really excited about it. Um, but uh, yeah, we figured while we're here, we can probably answer some questions. It can be Ruby-related questions. It could be, it could be literally anything. We are, we are here to fill you with wisdom, so long as it's wisdom that we have, which is not much. Oh yeah, no spoilers. Come on. We went to the uh, real quick Warner Brothers Japan yesterday. Revealed uh, Ninja Batman. Has anybody seen this? You should. It's so cool. Um, and we've actually. We'd actually known about it for a while since, you know, we're friends with Warner Brothers Japan, but we haven't been able to talk about it until yesterday. And it looks amazing. Um, so we went to go check it out. Uh, we also were reminded, uh, there's, this, there's this neat thing that a lot of people do. <laughs> Apparently, as soon as they get up to the microphone, they think, A, I can trick this dude into giving me a spoilery answer, or B, this is the moment I become a stand-up comedian. That was the Q&A section yesterday. Yeah, it's essentially it's everybody's like, all right, I got type five. Let me just like really try this out, and I'll see who takes to it. But it's basically the the whole premise of it is it's Batman in like feudal Japan, and uh, like literally the first question is, what characters are in it? It's like, well, you, what? you have to watch it. You have to watch the thing. They just showed you a trailer. You have to watch the thing. Uh, anyway, so yeah, no spoilers and stuff. But if anybody has questions, if you raise your hand, we'll run over there. Miles will run over there, and and then he'll shout it at me. Tell me. I can't move this. Well, favorite favorite superhero movie? Obviously, Suicide Squad. Next question. Next question. I actually have yet to see a single DC movie in the last 
like five years. I'm terrible. I'm terrible at watching current movies. Uh, I know it's a super popular basic answer, but I really love The Dark Knight. Like, Batman's my boy, as is the Joker. Heath Ledger was phenomenal in that movie. I love it. I love The Dark Knight. Um, it's old now, uh, but my favorite still is the Iron Man because it kind of kicked the whole thing off, and it was just like completely. I was not ready for that or expecting that to be that good, and it was amazing. Uh, and I love that. Yeah. 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 All right. My favorite topping for toast? Hmm. <laughs> the world cannot know. Check, check. Uh, uh, hey. uh, uh. Miles, say something. What the shit? <laughs> Are my, uh, okay, this one works again. I heard the voice of God, I mean Gray. What's happening? Did this you, is God, Carrie. Did you fix it? I'm sorry. And you I'm should really stop touching yourself. <laughs> but, but, oh, counter argument more. Okay, did, it, did you make it work? Are you coming out? Yeah, yeah, we're done. We got it. Hey, we have microphones. Ah, uh, technology. Yeah, it's also a shit show now. Thank you. I'm still going to stand very close though. Okay, I like butter because I'm a simple boy with simple needs. Uh, Gray, what's your favorite topping for toast? My, my favorite topping for toast? Yeah. yeah. You, you, oh, is this the uh, marmalade debate of 2017? Yeah. I'm, I'm going to have to go with peanut butter, probably. Peanut butter? Yeah. On toast? Why wouldn't you? <laughs> All right. All right, fair enough. No. Look, don't got don't to sell me. It's hard-hitting questions like these that we're here to, you know, sort yeah. out with everybody. All right. Well, I'm going to take the... Okay. You, he's going he's gonna to take two mics I'm not going to take two mics. I was going to go answer questions. I was going to get questions. I'm going to bring I'm gonna bring it to but you. this is fine because now I get to sit down. Yeah. Right. Well, let's step right up. What's your name and question? Sorry. And who, who, if you were to boss someone in the company, who would it be? Sorry, I'm still just like taken aback by the baller name Czar. You sound like you like deserve an alien army to command. That's awesome. Um, if we could boss anyone in the company, if I could boss anyone in the company, um, yeah, I'd love this to see. It's not fair for you. No, no but oh, it's, it's it'd be you know like Gus or Joel just to kind of see what you could be. <laughs> Ezra Cooperstein. So for those of you that don't know, Ezra Cooperstein is the president of Full Screen. He kind of looks like scary Mr. Clean. <laughs> he's, he's very blunt. Like, he'll come in, he'll be like... So first off, he's like the buffest, bald, most California dude ever. He's just like... He's like 6'3". Yeah, he's like giant, and he just comes in and he's like, Hey, I saw Cam Cam. All right. He's like, what does that mean? What does that mean? It's scary. I don't know if you said anything yet, but shout out to all the cosplayers today. I mean, whether you're doing something for Rooster Teeth or MHA or anything. And, 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 and of course, the cool t-shirts also wrapping the merch. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, another, another question. I want to I wanna, I wanna boss around Gavin. <laughs> I changed my answer. Oh, did you? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, Gavin, Gavin's, love Gavin, salt of the earth. He's just so busy all the time. That Gavin is just so busy all the time. No time for anything so busy. Not anymore. It's because he moves so slow. That's why. It's my turn. Because he's British. They're six hours behind. Was it, was it Joel on Twitter the other day was uh, trying to set him up. It's like, hey, man, how come you haven't uh, proposed to Meg yet? Stuff like that. Yeah, he was, he was having fun with that. Next question. She's wearing a ruby shirt. What's your name and question? 
Solon, and my question is, would you consider a Ruby edition of D&D? A Ruby? Would we consider it? I mean, yeah, a Ruby edition of Dungeons and Dragons? So, I just want to be very clear, the speakers point that way. We cannot hear the question. Yeah. Ruby edition of Dungeons and Dragons. I mean, you, sure. Yeah. yeah, that sounds cool. What's been awesome is that, you know, a couple of different fans have put together some really nice sets. A couple, because there's, there's been a couple of rule sets already designed. Uh, you know, uh, we, we've got a couple that uh, fans have gone ahead and submitted their proposed rule sets to us, and we've handed it off to the game development team for them to kind of study and see what works about them and what's balanced or not. I, I, someday? Yeah. I mean, like, we'll kind of see how combat ready goes. That's what I say, it's like not to sound too, like, yeah, businessy or anything like that, yeah. but it's like, if, if like, you know, Combat Ready is, is, is oh, so far like already really well received and that's awesome and I think that, you know, the more, the, the better that does, the more it op opens up opportunities for more yeah. board game and physical things because we like that stuff, so yeah, we, the we, better it does, the better chance other stuff does. Yeah, which is totally not a guilt trip. It's no, not, no. I'm not just saying, like, I'm not trying to guilt people into doing it, but it's the truth, it's like, yeah, you know, this is our first foray into a board game or something like that, so if it does well, then that means we get to do more potentially. Because we would like to. We play board games all the time. Yugi. What's your favorite horror movie? Oh, my favorite horror movie. Oh, It Follows is super good. Um, that being said, I think one of the best horror movies in the last few years is The Conjuring, which apparently set up this whole like cinematic Conjuring universe, but that first one, it feels like a classic 80s film. Is that the one, the third one Ant-Man was in, right? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> What are you talking about? A uh, cinematic universe joke. Oh, uh, it went over my head. head. I, dog. I, I thought you was his name Paul Rudd or That something? was like a joke. Yeah, did you know that guy's like 50? What? Paul Rudd's like 58. No, he's not. Nah, you're thinking in Ant-Man years. Now, The Conjuring's super good. It Follows is amazing. I'm it has a, a super good soundtrack. I'm a baby and I don't like horror movies because I'm a baby. Yeah. Okay, while he's looking up this fun Paul Rudd fact, Quick talk about cosplay again. I what just I accidentally Googled Paul Ruff <laughs> with two Fs. One of my um, one of my favorite things about going to conventions, obviously the cosplay is amazing, but it's also seeing cosplayers doing mundane things. Yesterday I saw the Joker and Harley Quinn having a discussion about whether or not Harley wanted mustard on her hamburger. And that's just the kind of thing DC's not going to venture into in their narratives. Okay, so I, I am not 100% right. He is not 50. However... <laughs> What would you like to guess that Paul Rudd's age is? 47. 48. Damn it, we're so close. And that's our Paul Rudd quiz of the day. Thanks for coming out, everybody. <laughs> uh, Gray, did you, what's your favorite spooky movie? I saw It and it scared me. Uh, yeah, no, uh, I, I saw it say It Follows is one of my most favorite ones in a while because uh, I'm more about the psychological suspense thriller stuff. I, I like stuff where all the, the horror is in the writing and not necessarily all of the splatter fest. I mean, the, the gore stuff can be really fun. I'm, I'm finally uh, numb to that <laughs> after being an adult, but uh, other than that, um, horror movies, huh? Yeah, I, I'm a big old baby. I keep having a squad. Yeah. Right? I cry. Uh, I'm sorry. Well, that's the same. I mean, I go with you walked over, it's fine. Yeah, is 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 alien considered horror? <laughs> yeah, then there you go. I'm, I'm speaking of movies. I'm, I'm happy to report everyone can calm down. I actually was able to see Blade Runner last night. Everything's so, okay. He saw it. <laughs> and I, I don't. Yeah, I'll, I'm gonna say his thumbs up. If I start talking about it, I'm going to talk for an hour. I don't want to spoil it for everybody. But One or two th thumbs up. up. That's two, two, thumbs up yeah. two full two thumbs, up. thumbs up. All right. Let's get to the next question. Uh, I, I saw a Chima Hunter jacket went up first. And he's looking so That's fun. a nice jacket. Uh, my name is Dalen. And uh, what happened to like the ending of season 13 of Red vs. Blue? What do you think happened at the end of season 13 of Red vs. Blue? I don't know. That's my Get a better imagination. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever's in your hopes and dreams. <laughs> nice try, though. Hey, what's up? Um, you've traveled a lot so far. Um, what is your favorite moment traveling? Favorite moment traveling, boys? Good favorite question. moment of traveling is when I get on the plane and they either don't have Wi-Fi or I don't want to pay for it. So I, I don't have to do anything. Like, I don't, I'm not obligated to do anything for three hours. And I can do whatever I would like. 
as long as I sit in my chair when they tell me to. To clarify, if he has access to Wi-Fi or any internet, someone back in Austin is asking him a question because he's the busiest director boy that ever lived. <laughs> Instead, I played Golf Story and listened to My Brother, My Brother and Me. And that was a great three hours. <laughs> and so you... I took a nap also. Sell us on Golf Story. That's that's the new thing that you got. Golf there, Story really. is my favorite. It's not my favorite game, but it's really good. I love hearing everyone talk about how the uh, conversations are animated. Yeah, it's um. So if it, yeah, so Golf Story is a game on the Switch. Uh, and what what? Fuck your question about travel. Let's talk about Golf Story. <laughs> <laughs> your your favorite moment of travel, Bill. All right, Miles. No, I, I'm done. I'm not gonna talk about Golf Story. All right. My favorite part about Golf Story is, is, is when the ball travels from my golf club into the hole and makes it. That's my favorite mm, part of travel. Mm, See? Mm, mm, I did looped it. it back in. You sure did. I looped it back in. My favorite part of travel is seeing all of you. Yeah, no, for real though, it's pretty rad. No, but for real though, yeah, seriously. Uh, travel, when we were in Tokyo, uh, we were trying to figure out how to how trains work because we just don't have those in Texas. And uh, there were two children singing the Pen Pineapple Apple Pen song, oh and I sang it with them. And there was this like moment where like language barriers were destroyed, <laughs> and like culture, it was just all out the window. We we're like awesome. We shared this moment, and then their mom was like, "This American is strange." <laughs> and then I went about the rest of my day. But that moment was really nice. Yeah. So to be clear, I mean we're in the middle of a train station inside of Tokyo. And Carrie and I are going over the map and like, oh my god, so how are we gonna do the connections? How do we get back? We gotta make this meeting, we're gonna do we both look over. <laughs> He's gonna get us arrested. <laughs> they laughed. They were very small children. And you were a very big American man. <laughs> I'm going I, to the gym. I don't mean that way, I mean tall. Thank you for your question. Also uh, by Golf Story. Yeah, by this Golf panel brought to you by Nintendo. Yeah. By the way, I, I would say real quick, my favorite part of the travel is getting past security. Everything after security is fine. It's fine. All right, next question. Ah. Oh, there was a rift in time. I think I saw the hammer first. Sorry, ma'am. Come on over. Oops. All right, on the subject of Red versus Blue, are we any closer to a full mercenary spin-off series? That'd be cool. Uh, we got a lot of other stuff going on right now. Uh, but, it, but it would be cool. It'd be pretty cool. It would It'd be pretty be cool. fun. It'd be a lot of fun. How cool would it be? Things get weird when Microsoft gets involved. But that's, uh, uh, we love them. Yes, you! My name is Melissa, and I wanted to ask all of y'all, who is your wife, waifu, and ruby? Oh, waifu. waifu for laifu and ruby. Well, it's weird considering their ages. <laughs> it's also weird because their actresses are over there right now listening to this. Make sure they're not paying attention. That's Gang. Woo! That's a good one. That's a good one. I was going to say the same thing. Ah! Or are, are artificial life forms weird? Ah, we take I saw Blade Runner last night. I could talk about Penny for a while. Ah. <laughs> oh, she's, she's, she's so sweet. Um, mm. I bet Salem would. No, no. <laughs> ah, no. Ah. Well, how, how silly am I? I, I should have said Neo. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's cute. You took the weird thing and made it adorable. Yeah. Well, yes. The best part about Salem is she's got the boob window. Yeah, yes, that's the best part. And yeah, uh, she's also pure evil. And then the fact that she's pure evil. Uh, nah, I go Nora. Nora seems like she'd be a lot of fun to hang out with and yeah. travel the world and go on exa adventures and stuff. She'd be fun. Yeah. yeah, I agree. Good question. Who's got another question? Oh, sir, with the Master Chief helmet, come on down. Da da da. If you look Halo, have you ever seen Red vs. Blue? I um, have. What's the most annoying moment or project you had to work on in that person's team? The most annoying moment in a project? Uh, when you're behind closed doors with Terry and he farts. <laughs> Maybe. We all do it. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm throwing him under the bus, but yeah. Technically, there's there's closed doors right now. I'm just throwing that out there, and everyone else is very far away from me. Um, I think uh, 
for me, uh, annoying and nerve-wracking, if they can be the same thing. Uh, we've talked about this before, like during season one of Ruby, uh, our editorial folder where we keep, uh, yeah, where we keep like the audio from all the recordings. I'm and, still having flashbacks. And the animatics, okay, me. we're through this. And the animatics and all that just kind of disappeared about around episode four or so. Triggered. Uh, and all we had was the exports. Uh, so we had to like recreate the first four like animatics for the first four episodes for the, for Ruby Volume One, just like overnight. Uh, with with thankfully we had a backup copy of all the audio. We just had to redo it basically. Uh, that was it fun. So that was probably my most annoying experience. And by annoying, I mean I wanted to hang myself. Uh, the company's uh, data backup procedures got much better after that. We're good now. We're good now. Knock on knock on wood. Um, this is a moment that I think happens at every production. It's trying to get that final, final, good, good export. Because without fail, you will be watching the export and then go... Hey, Miles. Look right, right now. Look right. Hi, Mr. Meese. I've been looking at Miles and I just I can't focus because Mr. Meese is very good. Thanks for all that you're kind to. <laughs> <laughs> nice um, bulge. <laughs> Um, on every project, yeah, when you're waiting for the last export, like, without fail, you're like, all right, guys, we're all exhausted. We've been here forever. Let's watch it one more time and make sure it's, oh, my God, there's a, there's a, there's a messed up frame. There's a single frame that's wrong. We have to go back and fix it. And then you export it for another hour. Those are actually my favorite times. Because, well, now, because I'm hanging out with, where'd he go? He was gone. Oh, Richard's okay. walking around somewhere. The editorial team... Get weird when it gets late and we're there and we have nothing else to do. And it's turned into who can show the most obscure YouTube video uh, that makes you kind of cringe. I learned about the. Uh, Try not the, to cringe, it's bad. There was like the alcohol anonymous, anonymous safety dance video. Did Stan ever show you that? I think it's a joke. I'm pretty sure it's a joke. It's always Stan. No, it wasn't alcohol somehow. anonymous. It was like a. Um, so, somebody, somebody else knows what it was. I can't remember what it was. It was this weird safety video. Um, oh, sex offender awareness video. But no, no, it was a joke. But they had to do this like dance where they were like, my name's Earl and I'm here to say that I don't do that anymore in a major ah. way. Like, <laughs> it, was, um, it, was, it was like Stan who works on the editorial team. Like, he grew up on a farm in the middle of one of those states that you don't remember. It was Iowa. It was Iowa, thank you. I'm sorry, I didn't from Iowa. And, um... <laughs> But for some reason, he knows more YouTube like videos well, than I mean, anyone he's, he's else. He's catching up on a lifetime of web surfing all at once. Yeah, now that he's actually got real internet, I guess. Yeah. Finally. Um, but yeah, those late night. Let's see, because to get real, real quick, like those are the times when you, you truly put in the test of like how much do we care. So like my example is on Mercs in the final episode in the big quarry fight, like we noticed pretty late that there's like a bajillion bullet tracers in a few shots and we are like, man, it really looks like these bad guys can't shoot worth the shit. But it's four in the morning and we're all tired and you know what? It's not broken, so let's just leave it. But then you make that decision and for the rest of your life, it's like, I wish I'd taken that extra hour to fix it. Yeah, at the, at the time it seems, it, yeah, I mean, we have the same deal where it's like, you know, we'll get, I'll get somebody to tweet me a screenshot that's like the character's floating right here in this frame, and I'm like, yeah, I know, but for us to fix that, I would have taken another, like, two hours of every time, and it just really wasn't worth it. Yeah, at, at some point, we, we try to absorb the pain so that the crew can go home and get some sleep, and we're like, yeah, I, well, we'll go ahead and take the pain at that point and look at the errors page in the Ruby fan wiki. Yeah. The last couple years, just, like, yeah, we know someone will see that glitch someday, but... On, on, this is also nicely segues into we were doing that again overnight last night for a variety of cool things uh, that will be shown today at the Ruby panel at Madison Square Garden at 2 o'clock. Who here is going to the Ruby panel? Everybody should go to the Ruby panel, please. Awesome. Yeah. We've got some cool stuff to show. And there are several things that we're showing. I'm just going to say that. Yeah, but we were up super late again last night. So apologies in advance for a little incoherence on the panel today. I'm going to slam a Red Bull right before and be all hyper boy. Woo! All right, let's see. Who else has a question that hasn't had a chance to ask a question? Ozpin. Professor Ozpin. That's a nice cane. Mm, I'm also, that's a good replica of your weapon. Was a sex joke. Your wife, oh, was about your favorite Ascendos from Ruby. 
sun. Like sun, 100%. I feel like as, as Neptune, if I don't say sun, I'll get in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> you can say Torchwick. It's okay. I know. I was going to say it's yeah, okay if you. you want yourself to wrap your sweet, sweet <laughs> arms around you. Yeah, would, would, would that be uh, masturbation at that point, or would that be? It'd be a uh, form yeah. of masturbation. Yeah, I don't know that it's direct, but yeah. They do say it's important to love yourself. Yeah. Oh, Iron Daddy, though. Mm. Mm. That he, sure come off. You see a lot of his it. his his hold is both warm and cold because of the metal. Right down the middle. What do you think the below the belt situation is with that dude? Oh, I have it concepted out. I know. <laughs> There's a file somewhere. There's not. Jesus. There's not. I'm just kidding. There's not. Sun too. Sun for you. I don't mind sharing him. Yeah, yeah, we, we can take Sun. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's a good boy. Do you want to do in character or out of character? Mm. All right, next question. Uh, I see a Torchwick in the back. Da -da -da. That's apropos. Da -da -da. There's also a Macho Man behind you. My name is Ethan, and out of any production you've done, which characters do you like the most, and which ones do you want to just punch in the face? Oh, jeez. Which characters do we like the most? Which ones do we want to punch in the face out of any production we've ever worked on? Chris Ramirez is off. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's okay. The shorts of their own universe, so you can say it. <laughs> the Rooster Teeth cinematic universe of shorts. Yeah. Mmm. Um, I would say... We always give the lame answer of, like, whatever the last scene we wrote is usually our favorite character. I would say, as a whole, Crow is probably my favorite character. Um, just because there's a lot about like his semblance and just like his life that I relate to. Um, but uh, and then least favorite, I don't know. Cardin's kind of an ass. Cardin's kind of a douche. Um, Whitley, I his voice actor is very nice. The, not that the Cardin's is it, but his voice actor is very nice, and I so I can't be mad at Whitley very often. I mean, I don't. Yeah. Punch in the face, I guess, would be Cardin. Uh, not, not that I hate him, but occasionally you do want to slap David from Camp Cap. <laughs> yes! yeah. I'd like to change my answer to a firm David. <laughs> How firm? I love Nikki. Nikki's the sweetest child to ever exist. And when we got a cardboard cutout of her put in our office, I was so happy that she was placed nearest my desk for a while. She was my little cardboard cheerleader, and I loved her and wanted her to do her best. Um, boy, I just want to break Felix's teeth. He's just a monster. He's the worst. But I kind of love him because of it. So it's kind of the torture situation as well. Yeah, I hate myself is what I'm getting at. Yeah, <laughs> but, but then you'll love yourself. Yeah. Good question. Good question. Other questions. Other. Oh, well, ooh, we hey. have a brave warrior down here. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, I was at the Ruby uh, panel last year, and I did Thank remember you. hearing that um, there was a time when you were working on one of the episodes, and you just barely got it out in time for the uh, in time for the actual air. So, uh, how often does that actually happen to you? A lot less now. <laughs> you'll, you'll be happy to know that uh, the first couple of episodes of Volume 5 are good to go. Yes. <laughs> so if, if the site crashes on October 14th, you'll be happy to know it's all your fault. It's not going to be us this time. The, the funny thing was that, so you said you saw last year's New York Comic Con panel. Okay, so we were probably talking about something in Season 3. The funny thing is, so the first episode of Volume 4... Um, we had just a couple, like, render issues, like we were saying, it's like, you know, oh, crap, we catch one. But no, we did, like, like a, 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 everything for the first episode was, like, really coming together, we just had a couple, like, last minute, like, premiere render issues with everything that's done, but the issue is that those renders take, like, an hour each. So, essentially, what ended up happening was we were up all night just trying to get the video file to upload. By the time it was done... Y'all were on the website so much hitting the refresh yeah. that we couldn't upload it anymore. We got done in time for the season premiere volume four last year, and then it was the internet equivalent of all, all everyone here is trying to go that way to richardteeth.com. We're like, we've got the file, we're right here, let us yeah. through. 
everyone just it. stop and we'll do it and then you can watch it so that was like the, I think that episode was like the last time that we had like a really big like oh god this is last second last second think things are calmer now things are calmer now that was a good question though it's stressful but it's a good environment but this gentleman in the white shirt with the enthusiasm hello my friend all right, two things. First off, shout out to the girls at the back of the cap line. They have basically made my dream come true, having all the Ruby figures signed by each voice actor. You. Yeah. Second off, yeah. has Yang yeah. figured out her vibrating arm feature yet? Gross, get out of here. <laughs> Ask Barbara. I'm sure she'll tell you exactly what you want to hear. What's up, my dude? Come on up. Is that a Cowboy Bebop shirt? Uh, no, it's not. Oh. Uh, oh, that's dope. That's also good. That's also good. Uh, I have a general question. Right, I have a big thing. Out of all the camps that Cameron Campbell's Camp Campbell has, what would you prefer to spend the summer for? Oh man, what camp would you want to go to Camp Campbell for? Now here's the trick about that question is that you're not going to get what you want. You're going to get the bargain bin version of that camp. Uh, I'm going to use this as a platform to start my new campaign uh, for if and when Camp Camp gets to season three, which is a superhero camp that Dragon Face is a part of. <laughs> so that I can be in camp camp. Oh, superhero camp. Drop the mic. Um, mm. Oh, man. It can't be something too dangerous. I'm, I'm trying to think, like, which one would still suck the least after when David and Campbell screw it up? Ice cream camp. Ice cream camp. <laughs> How to make ice cream. Yeah. They, they, no, 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 what is just... <laughs> it's a camp made of ice cream. Yeah. It lasts about five minutes. Then the ants come. Um, canoeing, I'd drown. Rock climbing, I'd fall. You know what? Music camp. I go to music camp. That'd be fun. That'd be kind of cool. David is at least musically inclined. Paranormal studies. I want to go back to oh, uh, Spooky yeah. Island. I feel like music camp would be great. Yeah, I would that. I feel like music camp would be great. I feel like it would be ten people sharing one recorder, and I feel like that would get kind of gross almost immediately. And this one time at camp camp. Oh no! <laughs> Nerf would be like, guess where this is going? Come here, losers. <laughs> yeah, that's that. No, I'm not going to the Spooky Island basement. We know the dark, dark deeds that have gone down there. Uh, good question. Here's another question. I saw a bunny get shoved in the air. Yeah. So, come on down. Can I, can I pet the bunny? Yes. Oh, this worked out great for me. All right. Hi. Um, this is just a general question for both of you. It's going to have me go a little bit more serious. Um, when all is said and all is done, what do you want to be remembered for? Dude, this guy, what do you want to be remembered for? Damn. Telling good stories. Yeah. That's, that's all it is. Telling good stories. That's like, you know, we're, we're going to come and go, and it's going to be that sort of stuff that you leave behind, whether you were able to share cool stories with people while you're around or while your career was going, and, or, you know, even after you're gone, someone could possibly still find that story, maybe, and, and get something useful out of it that helped them through their day or some challenge that they were dealing with. It's pretty easy for me to answer. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, mine's in a very similar boat. I mean, like, it would be awesome if a hundred years from now someone was like, hey, there's this series back when they still used video idiots um, and not full hologram projection rooms or whatever's going to happen. And, hey, they, there's this, this company that did these animations and, you know, they, they were pretty cool back then. So, you know, let's check them out. Um, yeah, I mean, I, that's the same reason I just like doing this in general. It's just like, I one of the reasons I like, you know, media in general is like, I like I like it when other people are, are able to make me feel things, whether it's happiness or sadness or caring or anything, anger or anything. Um, so the sheer fact that I'm able to, to cause emotions in others is, is what inspires me to keep doing this. So the idea that, you know, Hopefully, 1080p is usable later in the future, and, and uh, Blu-rays are readable. Uh, yeah. Um, I'm actually taking over the world soon, um, oh, nice. and all my oh. human slaves will erect statues in my likeness. Oh, can so we do joke answers? Yeah. Well, I'm sorry. A joke? 
I was doing like a serious thing. Okay, okay, okay. Serious thing? okay cool. Yeah, Should yeah, you ask yeah. for something real? Um, yeah, anyways, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, all the textbooks will be written about me, and I'm just kidding. No, I it's what these two guys said. Like a nice guy that tried hard and entertained people. That's it. Yeah. Not a dick. That's just all like, I really hope for. I really just hope people don't remember me as a dick. I just want like a simple Wikipedia page. That's all I want. That's all I want. That's all anyone just ever like wants. A, like a, like doesn't have to be much, you know, yeah. just, just, you know, a couple 50, paragraphs, that's 50 it. 50 years from now, when the donation uh, pages are literally the founder of Wikipedia shouting at you, please, please, please give us money, and that's yeah. why I don't know no, that. At that point, he's going to come to your house, he's going to be like, I see a Wikipedia. <laughs> this is my wallet now. <laughs> but I'm sure they do this Very support. nice question. All, Thank you for that. Yeah, that's good. Uh, 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 Carrie, you pick one. I've been picking all of them. Okay. Give me your mic. Oh, yeah. Or do you, do you, am I running it? Okay. I got two mics. I mean, you're literally holding a sign that says, notice me. Do you have a question? <laughs> what would be your semblance? What would be our semblance? <laughs> That's deep. That's just, that's, that's basically as real as that previous question and just in a different way. Oh, man. Uh, faster render times <laughs> on, on editing yes. software. Um, I would I would try and find a way. Uh, my semblance would be something akin to like a mulligan, or like maybe what you know maybe like once a day or something like that. I could just like you know, tracer it. Yeah, I can like tracer it. Maybe like, even just like a minute, even just a minute. I would I would try and like just be like I'm gonna undo that real quick, just real quick, just undo Control Z. I'll call it Control Z. Uh, shit, I forgot it already. Um, oh, uh, if I could mimic any, any voice perfectly, that would be pretty cool. Like, I just immediately, like, switch voices and then, like, why, yes, this is the general. I need access to layer three. I don't know why I think the army has layers or why I'd need to be doing that. What, what would that help you do in your normal day-to-day? -day? Are you just, I like... I told you I'm planning on taking over the world, Carrie. Are, you don't listen Are you just going to call the Chick-fil-A and be like, yes, of course oh. I'm the general manager. Please leave 20 nuggets outside. Thank you. It's my pleasure. <laughs> Why don't I get the feeling that years from now, the cops are going to say, like, you know, how did you not know about Miles? It's like, yeah, I guess all the signs were there. Yeah, it's your fault for not believing me. It's a great question. Who's got another one? Oh, she, no, you nice lady in the, in the blue. Not dude that got in front of her like an ass. <laughs> Screw your dreams. Pay attention to me. Um, out of all the characters that you guys have voiced, what's your favorite line from something that you've done? Oh shit. Uh, my favorite line's David because somebody fucking has to. That's my favorite line. I I can't remember it verbatim. What was it? Uh, it was a Paloma line where I spit. Okay, uh, yeah, uh, sorry children. Uh, take yourself and fuck yourself with yourself. I'd say you know, Torchwick's finale speech was pretty cool. Going out kind of classy and stylish. It's nice. Yeah. yeah. Okay, we have, because you've been waving a Gundam, it's not like we're going to say no. Giant Robo. Oh, okay, why are you getting your phone out? This is becoming a thing. So, with the LTZ and I've seen yeah. that they're worse than the mobile workers in Gundam The Origin. Will there ever be something similar to a mobile suit? Will there ever be anything similar to a mobile suit in Ruby? Is that what you're asking? We had the uh, the Elysian Knights. You know, Torchwick hijacks the prototype in Volume Two, uh, which I guess the, those AKs, that those models are about two stories tall and pretty pretty fast on a freeway. They're usable that way. Um, I would say that we have some ideas for where you could take some Ruby things, but also if you're interested in giant in giant robotic mechs, which you clearly seem to be. You should pay attention to something we've been talking about recently called Genlock. <laughs> As I look at Greg. Ew. Other questions? I feel like I've been choosing all of them. Okay, well, I mean, okay, I know you jumped in front, but go ahead. you, 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 you uh, gave him shit. Now's your time for redemption. Now's the time. He, he waited there. So, what camp would any of the Ruby characters be in in camp camp? Mm. Well, Ruby would go to a weapon building camp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. She, she's supposed to hit the Marksmanship. Yeah. Uh, Weiss would go to a homework camp. 
It's where you design everyone else's homework uh, and then grade it yourself. Um, the gang would do. Mm, would you do self defense? Uh, or like kickboxing? Like, they do like kickboxing and stuff. Blake, uh, uh, reading. Reading camp? Yeah, book camp. Reading, writing. Reading, uh, writing. Oh, she'd do a creative writing. She'd creative, creative writing, writing camp. Yeah. yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. They all be alone because no one else would do any of these things. <laughs> No, Preston would be there with Blake. I have a great idea. It's a one man, one show, one act play. That's great. Do you want to read it? No. Fine. He doesn't have a script anyways. Improv. All right, next question. All right, hey. Good to see you guys again. Um, you guys were in Japan last year, if I'm not mistaken. What was your favorite part of that trip, if I may ask? Mine was the hot springs. I already gave my answer. Favorite part of Japan, here to give his answer. His was hot springs, Cray. Are you a Uh, the ramen. Yes! No, yeah, there, there's a, I can't remember the name of it, but like in the middle of Tokyo, there's a ramen shop where you don't have to talk to anyone if you don't want to. Uh, like you walk in, there's a vending machine to order. You go, you go to this bar where you can like put up dividers between you and everyone else. They can't see you. You just like put your little tickets like underneath this like wooden slot and then they put the bowl in front of you. And if you want more noodles, you just write on a card and hand it to them. And you don't have to interact with a single human soul. And sometimes that's what I need, okay? I just need to recharge. I know I'm gonna get flack for this. I thought the ramen was okay, but I was upset by how good the sushi was. I was like offended that sushi could be that good and I didn't know for like 26 I, I like, years. I feel like Americans are like, their ramen game, especially in like New York and LA are pretty on point. Like, that's, that's it's true. actually like, like, it, I, I have, I've only been in there, I've only been over to Japan once. I've only had ramen a couple times there. In general, I feel like if you go to like a high-end ramen place, especially like in New York, you're you're pretty much getting experience. Yeah. Sushi, you don't even know what sushi tastes like until you go over there. By the way, now that I've let the kind of classy version of the answer linger yeah. for a little bit, no, it's the food and the color. It, it was the shopping. Akihabara. <laughs> yeah, Akihabara was amazing. Oh my god. And in, in, in particular, there's um, there's a store called Mandarake. It looks like Mandrake uh, in English. Uh, but they have a six-story <laughs> tall building in the middle of Akihabara where every single floor of the building is themed by a different toy type or vintage of toy. So it's like, it's the classics, it's the 80s, it's, like, or it's the hentai, and then it's the... Boy uh, love. Yeah, uh, and, and they also, they own, uh, was it Nagano? Not, Nagano Broadway Shopping Mall. Oh, they own it? I didn't realize that. I, I think it's them. That's cool. like, they, they, and the, the entire top floor is there. They have a couple more stores yeah. throughout it. This entire mall where like the, the bottom floors are you know, luggage and some food and whatever. But uh, at the very top, it's like they've got two or three different stores where it's nothing but actual enemy cells. And then, you know, here's um, every uh, mecha toy ever made since the 1970s. Hey, hey, Gray. Hey, Gray, why don't you tell everybody what you bought on the top floor of Mandarake? <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, you know, at the six-story location back in Akihabara was where I found an ever-so-slightly-used version of the uh, ridiculous uh, working Dominator weapon from Psycho Pass. It has the moving LEDs, and it transforms into destroyer mode, and it's got, like, a couple hundred different quotes from the show that the AI will give you. You really, uh, you really do trust the anime knowledge of this audience, because I'm not sure I could walk up to a bunch of strangers and say, yeah, well, I was in Japan. I bought a slightly used version of the Dominator. I don't know how well that would go over. <laughs> I was doing my motion still. But good question, yeah. Thank you. Next question. You got a question? Oh, she just pointed. Somebody pointed. Why are you all oh, You have a question? Sure. Okay. Yeah, well, okay. You, you don't. If you don't have to ask a question, it's not mandatory. No, it's fine. Um, it's more specifically at Miles. Hey, Miles, this is for you. Yeah, Miles. <laughs> when are we going to see them nips? <laughs> the question was, Miles, when are we going to see you in drag again? And the answer is... No, wait, wait, wait. She said, Miles, you were so pretty in Thanks, drag. Thanks, babe. Thanks. <laughs> when are we going to see you again? Uh, knowing this company, probably next week or some shit. <laughs> 
What was it like shaving your 10 year old beard? Dude, no, for real though. So I, she was referencing, so I've done, I dressed up as Ruby for 10 Little Roosters. Then I wore, uh, I was Dr. Frankenfurter when we did the free play thing for Rocky Horror, hell yeah. Um, then I did the, Jessica Neger was super, super kind to bring us the Virgin Killer sweaters. Um, and then I was. So nice of her. <laughs> and then I was, no, she's really nice. No, she's great. She's here, I think, too. If you see Jessica Neger, you give her a hug because she's like the sweetest human being on the planet. Like candy, she'll rot your teeth. Um, so, uh, and then, yeah, we did a drag episode of On The Spot, and like, <laughs> dog, I, I was like, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna take this seriously, I'm gonna go all in, so I shaved my beard for the first time in like eight years, that was weird, I got a bunch of looks for that, but I also felt pretty, cause I was, uh, yeah, no, you throw a wig thing? on me, I ain't that bad looking. Can I tell them the thing you don't want me to tell them about which, you shaving your beard? Uh, which thing is that? Uh, is me? everybody here familiar? With the show, I can't remember the show name right now. Oh, son of a bitch. <laughs> oh, uh, is everyone familiar with the, is everyone familiar with the show name How I Met Your Mother? Yeah! Did you know that if Miles doesn't have a beard, he looks like Ted Mosby 100%? Woo! Completely 100%. Mosby. I'm just an architect trying to find my future kid's mom. Yeah, let me do it by dating literally a thousand people over the course of seven years. Yeah, I make questionable decisions and I tell my kids about all of them. Blue trumpet. Uh, yeah, you great Ted Mosby. Anyways, yeah. great question because I gotta talk about Ted Mosby. Hey, Pira. Are we gonna see Pira's family in volume five? Are we gonna see Pira's family in volume five? So, I don't wanna do spoiler questions. So I'm just gonna say, because there's nothing, I'm just gonna say nothing in volume five, no. But that, is, that doesn't mean that it's not necessarily happening, it just means it's not in volume five. No spoilers. No spoilers. You'll see her chosen family of her close exactly. friends. Who, yeah, you know. isn't a team a family? Yeah. Hey, can I get a selfie hey, with Miles like, and Dick Gray? Um, between all the uh, awesome music to make in house by uh, Jeff Williams and Buffett Arrow, what are you doing since the first time you've ever seen this song? Uh, all the, between all the music that we make uh, in house, like between Jeff and Nico, uh, what's our favorite song that we've made for him? Too? I really loved everything that David Levy did for Mercs. That was super fun, and it was really hard because that was like not really within his wheelhouse of usual stuff. He normally does like cool, badass, epic, trailery extravaganza, and it's amazing, but that was a lot more like jazzy, swing, like small band stuff, and it was a challenge, but like he he worked super hard at it, and I think it turned out really cool. Uh, I don't know how to answer that question shortly. I mean, like, there's the songs, there's the dramatics, yeah. there's the action, whatever. I, to this day, the very first time I heard This Will Be The Day, I still remember being at my desk and for the very first time, and we were trying to figure out what was going to be the opening song of the show, and we thought it was going to be a different song, yeah. and then you know, Jeff emailed over, hey, by the way, I also have this song uh, kind of ready to go, and I'm working on this one, too, and we're like, I was like, guys, 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 no, quick, yeah. we need to yeah, switch, so switch it out, that needs to be we, the OB. We've we told the story from somewhere else before, but... Uh, in volume three, the song that Velvet is fighting to uh, when she summons all the weapons, that was originally going to be volume one's intro. Uh, and we liked it, and you know, everything was feeling really good, good about song. it. And then, and then Jeff sent over the song, and he was like, no, 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 guys, listen to this one, though. And we were like, let's do that one. And then for like two years, we kept trying to find a place for that song, and we couldn't really find it. And then uh, when we sent Jeff the cue for the Velvet bit, he was like, Hey, what about this? And we're like, yes, this kind of fits 100% perfectly. Um, I'm gonna be lame and give two answers. Uh, my favorite song is probably uh, Crow's song from Volume Four, uh, just because I, yeah, I'm just, I'm a, I'm a big fan. It's, it's funny because a lot of times, uh, also uh, Jeff and Casey are gonna be here. I think, <laughs> yeah, uh, starting tomorrow. tomorrow. Uh, I think uh, <laughs> it, 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 there's a chance it might be here later tonight, but I think it's gonna be starting tomorrow. They they, they had to work full like. Um, just teaching right Jeff's now. teaching today, and Casey just started at Berkeley, actually. Um, but um, 
uh, I just, I, I, it's funny because a lot of times what will happen is Jeff will be working on a song and he'll send me a version of it for us, like he'll send me the demo of it essentially. It's like, hey, is this working? What do we think? Where does this go? Kind of thing. And he, usually he's singing it. And then uh, later he'll get Casey to sing it. Because uh, I'll think, you know, she's not always just like right there. Uh, but I actually just like, I like, I, I love Casey's voice. I also really love Jeff's voice. Like, that's very akin to just like the music I listen to in general. Um, so him doing that song is awesome. And then my, uh, this is the, the cheat answer and I'm sorry, but one of my favorite cues um, that Alex Abraham, who does um, a lot of stuff, exactly, yeah, he does yes, a lot of stuff, um, uh, especially like uh, some of the more like score related things, not necessarily the songs, uh, is actually something in volume five. It's actually my favorite thing, so sorry. We have time for one more question. All right. Nice Yu-Gi-Oh box. I love you too. First of all, hey Miles, I'm the guy who answered the Melanie and Militates question. Second of all, what was your favorite, what, so far, what was your favorite Ruby Chibi skit to write? Favorite Ruby Chibi skit to write? I really had a lot of fun with, uh, well there's one coming up soon that you'll see uh, for a nondescript winter holiday. Um, but then I also really loved uh, the, the Little Red Riding Hood one. That one yeah. I had a lot of fun with. Yeah, the one where, they, where Team Ruby puts on the play. Yeah, that was fun. It is all literally a blur for me, so I don't know anymore. <laughs> and I haven't read any of them yet, so. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, thank you all so much for coming out. Yeah, we got to start making our way over to MSG. Hope to see yeah. you all there. Please Thanks for hanging out. The panel. And we'll be Please back stop. here in the booth throughout the entire rest of the weekend. So if you're yes. here, uh, just come back and chill. Thanks, y'all. See y'all.